Hey guys. In this video, I am going to be explaining how to do the one-handed cut, which looks like this. Uh, this is also known as Charlier's cut, or the one-handed pass. Um, basically, um, I'm going to be going through the major actions, as well as giving you some tips on how to perform it better. So now, we're going to start uh, with the deck in straddle grip. So, this is called dealer's grip, and this is called straddle grip. Basically, we have the cards, um, the thumb on the left side, the index finger on the top, these two fingers supporting the deck on the right side, and the pinky at the base of the deck. This is extremely important. Now, we're going to bring it into an elevated straddle grip, which basically means that we're not going to have it down here, contacting right here, we're just going to have it up a little bit more with the thumb up here. Now. You are going to release your grip with the thumb. So basically, we are now going to be holding the deck with the index finger and the uh, little finger. These two cards, these two fingers, are going to support the cards on the right side, uh, but they're not necessary. They will become necessary in a moment. Now you're going to bend your thumb in like this and contact it to the side of the deck. You're going to push hard against the side of the deck. This is why you need these two fingers here. If you release these two fingers, now the cards will fall. So, we're holding the cards like this. You're now going to release your grip with the little finger and the pointer finger. When you do this, this packet will fall. For At first, releasing it will feel unnatural because this is how you're mainly supporting the deck at this moment. So you might have to pry your fingers apart with your right hand. Once you get comfortable doing this, you'll find that it will easily separate the cards into two roughly equal sized packets. Now, your thumb is bent right here. You're going to extend that thumb joint so that now these two packets are as large an angle from each other as possible. Usually this will be about 45 degrees, but um, the larger, the better. So, here we are here. Now, this finger is going to stay here. This is extremely important. If this finger leaves, these cards are going to fall. That's not good. So, we'll keep this finger here. However, the index finger over here is going to move to the base of the deck. Now it's down here and moves to the uh, right below the top right hand corner of the deck. Right here. It moves just like that. Uh, now it's going to apply pressure up just like this. And as it does that, um, it's going to slide its nail right across the face of the cards of these, this card, the Jack of Spades. It's going to slide right up like this, and this packet is going to be pushed up. I'll show you one more time from this angle. So this packet is going to be pushed up, just like that. Now, once you're here, um, your thumb is holding this packet right here, and it is stopping from this packet from going up any farther. So you're going to release your grip with the thumb, just slightly. You're going to need your thumb again in a moment, so keep it there. And what you're going to do is, um, is just push up farther with your index finger below the cards. So that now this happens. You see that these cards fall on your fingernail and go down. Now what you're going to do is you're going to lower your fingernail it's just going to go right down like this, and as you do so, this packet is going to fall. Now, the bottom, the original bottom packet of the deck is on top of the original top packet, and you can, with your thumb, close this packet over this one. Now, you successfully have cut the cards with one hand. So, um, now I'm going to give you some tips to practice this, uh, and quickly go over everything again. So, we have the cards in straddle grip. You contact the side with your thumb. You release your grip with these two fingers here. You're going to take your index finger, bring it under here. With your fingernail, you're going to slide up, bring up this packet, release your grip with the thumb, bring this packet higher than this packet, and close the packets. Now, some major things that you're going to have to practice to get this. First of all, you should probably practice doing this. This is important. Just practice over and over again, holding here, 
and releasing. And just do that. Do it about 20 times. So let's I'll do that a couple times right now. You're just contacting and then you are just releasing. Um, once you get used to doing this, uh, then you can start t trying to do the rest of it. But this is the start. If you if you can't separate it farther than this much, then you n there's no way you're going to be able to push this packet up over this packet. So practice separating. And once you practice separating, also practice extending that joint. And so th these cards get pushed as high as possible. Once you've done this um, many times, then you can try bringing your index finger below here and pushing up. A main part of the Charlier cut is keeping the packets together. If the cards are sliding around, then you're not going to be able to push them up properly. So um, you should keep sure, make sure that you're keeping this finger here, these fingers here, and that you're doing it fairly quickly. You shouldn't be holding this position for a long time and then going to here, holding this position for a long time and then closing it up. You should be trying to do it fluidly um, with as little motions as possible so that this becomes natural. The quicker you get it, the better. You can use the Charlier cut for many things. Um, what I use it for usually is when I'm doing a color change. Let's say I have the Nine of Hearts and I change it into the Joker. Now, the Nine of Hearts is on top of the deck and I don't want it there. So I cut it into the middle. Now, if someone else says, oh, well, then the Nine of Hearts must be on the top, I can show them that it's not on the top, it's not on the bottom. This is really cool because um, it's like no one's going to have expected that you invisibly cut the cards with one hand. Some people use this as a control. You know, they will have a card in the deck and they will get a thumb break. I don't think this is that, um, that useful because... It's hard to cut the cards with a thumb break. It just doesn't work very well. But uh, some people use it. If you like that, then you can use that for this. Uh, you should practice this a lot. It'll take some time to get it right. But when you do get it, uh, you can impress people with cutting the cards with one hand. Or you can use it, as I just mentioned, for your tricks. So guys, thank you for watching this video. Uh, have a great day. And also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Ace of Clubs.